Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Yes. We would like to take this time to invite you out to a helping hand ministry. We are located at 3003 P. Georgia Road. Mm -hmm. Please, please come in and praise the Lord with us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture from the day come from, for today come from Psalms 98. And it says, it's titled, A Song of Praise to the Lord for His Salvation and Judgment. Mm -hmm. And it reads it thus. O sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arms have gained Him the victory. The Lord has made known His salvation, mm -hmm. His righteousness. He has revealed mm -hmm. in the sight of the nation. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the hope, to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of the Lord. Praise the Lord, children. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Father, a word of prayer. Father God, most holy one, creator of the heaven and the earth, the seen and the unseen. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for our church member, Father God. Mm -hmm. We thank you for each and every person that's, that was able to attend mm -hmm. and the ones that are not, but had it in their heart to do so. Mm -hmm. But for some unseen reason, Father, they couldn't make it. We love you. We praise you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 amen, amen. And amen. All right. Thank you. Praise team. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Father God. Inside of me. Yes, I 
Yes, I still have a praise inside of me. Sometimes things just get rough on us. I heard someone say that I come up on the rough side. Although I've been wounded and I've been strong, I never gave up. I never gave up. No, I trusted in God. I trusted in God. I got good news today. Through it all. Through it all. God bless me. I say through it all. And through it all. My God. God kept me. And I still have a praise inside of me. Yes, I still have a praise inside of me. There's a praise in my spirit, a praise down in my soul, a glory, hallelujah, that cannot be controlled. And I still have a praise inside of me. What a wonderful praise. Glory to God, church. Yes, I still have a praise. Inside of me, still Amen. have a praise, regardless as to what's going on in your life. Just say hallelujah. I praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, I love you. 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 Yeah. 
the sun shine through a cloudy day. Oh, he rocked me in the cradle of his arms. That's when he knew I been better. So if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? I want to know. Hallelujah. 
somebody else's spirit and, and we can gain strength and comfort from knowing that we're in the, the company of other believers. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know if you know what it's like being around a bunch of non-believers. No. You know, we can reflect on that for a minute. You get in the room full of non-believers, all kind of stuff is going on. Oh, and and, and, and we, we leave that place or that setting and we wonder, where in the world was I at? Yeah. You know, but when you gather together with believers, uh, the, the word tells us that we should come and we should be in one accord. Yes. yes. And, and, and we all here with one purpose, and that's to worship him. Yeah. And it's something that, that happens because of, we, of that mindset that we have, that, that he says that he inhabit the praises of his children. Yes. And, and I believe that God has already settled down in this place. And, and you know what? You could have had some troubles before you came in the door. That's right. Amen. And, and when you walk through the door, you say, thank God I'm here. Yes. And, and because you know that, that for a moment in time, that we can focus our attention on him and allow him to, to meet us where we are. Mm -hmm. That I, I, I have no fear of, of letting go. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we hold back. We don't want to let go. But, but I have no fear of letting go. That, Lord, I can, can, can lay it all before you. And today we're going to be talking about doing your best and understanding that the best is yet to come. Amen. And you've heard these, these titles before. You know, we're going to look at what God is talking about, us doing our best, because it's something that God expects from us. You know, we, we can expect a lot from God. And, and you know, a lot of times we sit down and we want God to do it all. But, but God says that, that there's a part that we have to play in and in, in, in walk in this walk out. There's a part that we have to play in talking to talk. You know, so he don't just want us to, to walk to walk and, and, and talk to talk. He wants us to participate in what he's doing. And you know, when you, when you participate in something, it, 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 it makes you appreciate it a little bit better. That's right. Amen. I know I've given my children many things. And they tore it up. <laughs> and 
they, they had they had no what we say they had no skin in the game, <laughs> and, and so they they didn't. But but guess what? When they came time for for them to participate in what the things that they were getting, they took care of those things a lot better. You know, when they know that they use their allowance money or they the money that they earned to 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 acquire these things, they they took care of it. Oh wow, because they don't. It's something that you learn when you participate. And so God That's is right. teaching us right. that as we participate in the things that He's doing, that that uh, it, it helps us to understand and appreciate it a whole lot better. Uh, Father God, I I thank you, Lord, for yes. another day yes. and the opportunity to declare Your Word. Because we find strength in your word. We find encouragement in your word. We find hope, Lord, in your word. And, and Lord, even we find help in your word. And, and there's so many cases, Father, where you sent your word and, and healed them and delivered them. You sent your word and, and met them at the point of their need. And you rescued us, Lord, by sending your word. So, Lord, this morning, God, as we listen to your word, I pray, God, that your word would, would touch us in a special way, God. And Lord, all of those things that we had as baggage when we came in this morning, I pray, Father, that you you lighten that load, Father, and, and let us, uh, for just this moment of time, hear what you have to say. And Lord, and experience you in a, in, in, in a new and fresh and exciting way, Lord, because there are things that you're desiring for us to do. That's right. And, and Lord, and even things that you desire for us to be, God. And one of the things you said is that we will be your children. Yes. And you will be our God. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, for thank all you. of that. Yes. But right now, Father, as we commit this time unto you, Lord, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that precious, mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you, Lord, would speak to us boldly, Lord. Touch those who have infirmities this morning, God. Those uh, those things that just attack our, our body, Lord. Not only our body, but those things that attack our mind. Yes. Lord, give us the peace that surpasses understanding. And, and God, and the comfort that you can give us, Lord, as we're struggling with things, Lord. Yes. And yes, things will cause us to struggle, Lord. And, yes. But you said that we can roll those upon you because you care for us. Yes. So, Lord, show us that you care. Mm -hmm. Oh, take away the, the pressures and the strains, yes, Lord. Lord. Take away the pains and the aches, God. Mm -hmm. Lord, touch us uh, on that inner part of us, Lord, where only you, uh, where only you, God, can, can show up mm -hmm. and show out, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, because sometimes we're hurting and we don't even know how to address the hurt. Mm -hmm. I, Father, I had an itch the other day and, mm -hmm. and I couldn't even scratch it. Mm -hmm. It was an internal itch and I cried out to you, Lord, yes. help me. And we talk about being on time. You took care of that itch, Father. And it's the same thing with our pains and our hurts, Lord, that, that sometimes that we can't touch the hurt or pain, but you know how to do it. Yes. So, Lord, do that this morning. And give us the sure, calm assurance, Lord, that, that everything is going to be all right. Yes. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Second Timothy 4, verses 7 and 8, he says this, I fought the good fight. Mm -hmm. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You know, there's something that the Apostle Paul is talking to his, his disciple, Timothy. And, he, and he's ending, uh, he's coming to the close of his, his life. Mm -hmm. You know, Apostle Paul has, uh, he's lived, he's walked with the Lord. I mean, since he met him on the road to Damascus, mm -hmm. he's walked with him for some, some years now. And he's ending. He knows that he's in the in the uh, dungeon. He's in a, a hole in the ground at this point in time, and and uh, he he's trying to pour his last bit of essence into his young disciple. Yes. And and when I say young disciple, that he met Timothy on one of his first journeys, that that he became a, a student, and he was a young boy at that time, Timothy, and and uh, Paul has been dealing with him. Um, through a course of time. And, and so he's telling him, he said, I have fought the good fight, Timothy. Yeah. He said, Timothy, I have uh, finished the race. He knows that the race is just about over. And, and what do we do when we approach in that time in our life where we know that we just can't keep doing the things that we used to do when we were 20 years old? You know, and I reflect too, you know, as I get a little bit older, you know, 68 years old. And, 
I say, Lord, how long can I do what I'm doing? Yes. You know, when, when will I slow down? And God says, you know, trust me. Yes. He said, I have kept the faith. You know, I, I Timothy, I haven't wavered to the left or to the right. That's right. And he said, I kept that faith. He said, that finally there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. He goes on to say, and not only to me, and this is the comforting part right here, not only to me, but also to, to all those who have loved his appearing. And it's something about when we, we uh, are anxious and we're looking forward to God coming back. And, and if you're a believer and if you're not looking for God, the anxious and, and anticipating him coming back, then we need to check ourselves because that's what we should be looking and, and anxious for, that the return of the Lord. And not so much a focusing on the, the, the things that's going on in, in our society. And I mean, I'm not saying unfocused, but I'm saying that our main focus should be on, on doing those things that are pleasing to him. You know, we're all confronted with choices of doing what's right and doing what's wrong. And, and each and every one of us, every day when we wake up, we, we can make a decision right there. I'm going to do the, the right thing. Or I'm going to, I mean, we don't consciously say I'm going to do the wrong thing. No. But guess what? We, we do. We, we struggle with that because, because even when, as we're turning over, we're getting ready to put our feet outside of the bed, mm -hmm. we have to make some choices. That's right. yeah. that's right. And so that's what I'm talking about. So the Bible uh, uh, labels these choices as, as good and evil. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we see this, this way back in Genesis. We see that, that the, they were confronted with doing good or evil because God gave them a, a, a challenge. He yeah. says, look, he says, I made all of this stuff for you, yeah. Adam. Yeah. 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 It's all yours. Yeah. And there's just one thing <laughs> that you can't do. Yeah. And, and, and he says, that, don't touch that tree yeah, don't over there. Yeah. Don't, don't mess with it. Don't bother and, and guess what? Uh, what they do? I mean, they, they hover right around that tree. <laughs> <laughs> and it's something, you know, when we tell tell our children don't, don't do, do something. Yeah, you better, I don't know about your children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh. the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to go try to mess with you. Yeah. Or they're going to they gonna play around it <laughs> and, and make you think that they're going to, well, I, I had a case by, we had this, uh, this, uh, this officer come in the neighborhood and he said, your, your child's opened up that door. I said, oh no, not my child. Because mm -hmm. I instructed my children they're not going to open that door. Mm -hmm. He said, sure, sure, they'll open the door. So we had a group of people, we went down to my house and we stood, the parents stood over here so that they, you know, so we stood over here and he went up there and knocked on the door. <laughs> They opened the door. Yeah. <laughs> and so that let me know that that sometimes even when we instruct our children yeah. not yeah. to do something, they gonna do it. guess what? They do it. They gonna do it. And so how do we come back to that? We're talking about doing our best to be our best. You know, in Romans uh, chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, it says this. Don't just pretend to love others, uh -huh. but really love them. Right. Mm. It goes on to say, hate what is wrong, hold tight to what is good. Right. Yeah. Love each other with genuine affection. Mm. You know, it's, it's something about when we, we're talking about doing the right thing. We're talking about evil versus good. We're talking about uh, uh, um, doing our best. Mm -hmm. We need to, to understand what, what is God talking about to us that's going to help us to do our best. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to get there. We're going to just paint a story for you and a picture so you can understand where we, where we are and where we need to be. And, and, uh, and, and we're going to uh, talk about um, what is it going to take mm -hmm. to put that best foot forward. Come on. I mean, because a lot of times, you know, we, 
you know, we hear people talk about get on the, the good foot. And I know there's a, I guess there was a guy that was from this area that talked about that, getting on the good foot. And, and, but, you know, just because somebody talk about getting on the good foot don't mean that it's going to be that easy to get on, on the good foot. So what does it mean to, to do your best, to, to be your best? And, uh, or, or how do you want to be remembered? As a person, do you want to be remembered as a person that that uh, a person of your word, or a person that that always did their best? That's right. You know that somebody can look at you, and if they had to sum up your 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 life, or they had to put value to the things that they saw in you, they, can they say that you were that type of person that always gave your best and always put the best foot forward? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, and there there are some who 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 will do. And I always got to throw this in. There's some that will do, but they're not doing it wholeheartedly. Or they're, they're, uh, Sister Christy used an example this morning of, of cleaning the table, and, and uh, I'm just going to clean that spot that I use. Uh, did, did you clean the table? Uh, yeah, so I cleaned the, the table. But, you know, and, and they know that they only clean that spot that they use. So uh, are you going to be remembered as a person who, who did the right thing? Or who who did clean the whole table, mm -hmm. whether you use that part or not, right. and, and it's amazing, mm -hmm. you know how how we can have heartedly do things. Yeah. So so is, is your heart in it? You know. So one of the things that we need to focus on is is doing the right thing. Is is our heart in doing the right thing? Yeah. That's right. And so we we see that that uh, uh, we're gonna need some help. Yeah. <laughs> And, 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 you know, God understands humanity. God understands your nature. So don't think that, that God doesn't understand uh, who you are. <laughs> you know, he says that he knows us better than we know ourselves. That's right. And, and I, can, I can trust that. That's right. You know, that he knows me and, and he knows even when I say I will. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I'm saying I won't. Right. Or sometimes I'm saying I don't. Yeah. And he knows that. And, and, and you know what? I don't believe. That that shakes God off His throne because He knows us. Right. He knows your your capacity and He knows the intent of your heart because He doesn't always look on the outside. You know we can judge people and we can sum some people up because we look at them and say, "Oh yeah, that person's going to be the right one." Mm -hmm. and, and you remember the story that even when they was picking the uh, the, the Samuel was out looking for for the uh, the king to anoint him, yes. he, he summed up seven seven sons. Yeah. This got to be the one. He was right. looking at the external. Yeah, I know. But right. then when the little ruddy boy came <laughs> off the field, he said, he said, Jesse, he said, there got to be at least one more. He yeah. said, well, this, there's the one more. He's out there in the field. Yeah. Well, bring him in here. We're going to wait. Yeah. And then when he saw him, uh, and, and there was nothing in was David's appearance that, that uh, said that he's the one. Uh -huh. Yeah. But guess what? God was looking on the heart. That's right. And see, that's what happens with us, that God yeah. looks on the heart. And, yeah. and remember that God is the one that sets the standard. That's right. And we talked about this some time ago, about how he sets a plumb line out there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that plumb line is, is the standard that God is saying. This is yeah. what we need to measure things yeah. by. Yeah. And, and I don't know what you measure things by in your life, but, but we, we, we have a ruler. And, and sometimes we don't want to use the ruler. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, let me say, we have a ruler, yeah, yeah, yeah. but sometimes we don't want to use the ruler. Uh, and, 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 and you know, I, another story <laughs> that I, on, I was helping on, this man. guy do some construction work, uh -huh. and he asked me to, to go cut some right angles. <laughs> I went over there and I cut some angles. And they, were not, they were not right angles. I cut some left angles. And so he, he, he informed me at that time that uh, that's not your job. I'm going to make you a laborer. So from that point on, I was the laborer and not a, a right angle cutter. And so God knows whether we're going to cut right angles or not or do the right thing. Uh, but, but something that happened uh, along the way with God helping us and look at what God did. For, for the first five days of creation, when he made something, he said, it's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. I mean, I can see God like this. Ooh, that's good. But on the sixth day, when he made man, and the word says this, that when he made male and female, he said what? He said, oh, that's very good. 
And so he he put a capitalization on that's very good. You know, he oh wow, we we I did we did a good job. And I'm sure that that's what he was saying because it wasn't him alone. He was there with the, the son and he was there with the Holy Spirit. You know, so we did it, oh look at us. Look what very good. And and so something happened to this very good thing that, that God did. So along the way, there was these two boys, Cain and Abel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and I say this because the, the Bible doesn't go into to uh, uh, illustration of of what was taking place with Cain and Abel, but they had to have had a relationship with God along the way. You know, God, even though he he kicked them out of the garden, Adam. He didn't just abandon the people. That's right. He didn't just leave them out there to, to sweat this thing out by themselves. No. And, and look at what it says in Genesis chapter 4. Uh -huh. It says, in the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of fruit mm. of the ground. Yes. But Abel brought an offering of the finest firstborn of his flock, mm -hmm. the fat portions. And the Lord had respect or regard for Abel for his offering. Mm. But for Cain uh -oh. and his offering, he had no respect. Uh -oh. and, and, and so I'm going to pause there because along the way, they, they had to have had some communication with God because look at what it says next. It says, so Cain, uh, so, uh, but for Cain, his offering had no respect. Cain became extremely angry mm. and he looked annoyed and hostile. Mm. And the Lord said to Cain, now, I surmise that if the Lord is speaking to Cain in this case, that he's spoken to him before. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, because he had his attention, and the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Yeah. And why do you look annoyed? Yeah. You know, meaning that, that, that he, he was concerned about this boy. And he's talking to him. And so this is the only time that we see him really talking to this boy this way. And he says, uh, he says, look at this, son. <laughs> I think that's what we say, right? Look at this, son. You know, we want the uh, son to pay attention, right? Yeah, look yeah. at this, son. If you do well, believe in me and doing what is acceptable and pleasing to me, will you not be accepted? Mm -hmm. That choice of good and evil, that choice of right and wrong is right here. Mm -hmm. And he says, but, and if you do not do well, by ignoring my instructions, sin crouches at the door mm. and its desire is for you to overpower you. Mm. Let me go on. But you must master it. Yes. Yeah. So God is telling us through this, this, this text that we can master those things that are crouching at the door. What's crouching at the door? Sin is crouching at the door. Good and evil, evil is crouching at the door. Good is crouching at the door. We're going to need to master over those things that are trying to consume us yes. and take us off course. Yes. And so how profound is this that somewhere along the course of time that the two, that one of the brothers understood the value of doing the best thing, yes. of doing the right thing. That's one right. of them understood that. That's right. And so, and I don't know, uh, you know, when we talk about giving sacrifices to God, mm -hmm. you know, and in the, in the, in mm -hmm. we sing songs, I, you know, give a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. Yeah. You know, or we bring sacrifices of praise. When we give a sacrifice to the Lord, it should be something that, that's from the heart. And, and remember, God is looking on the intent of the heart. Yeah. He's judging us by, by the actions of our heart. And if we're going to do our best to be our best, mm -hmm then God is looking on what's the intent of your heart. Is it to, is it to get brownie points? <laughs> you know, sometimes we do things just to get brownie points. Or sometimes we do things just to please somebody else. You know, or, or, or you know, and, and where's our heart at in, in when we're worshiping or serving God? You know, where's our heart at when we're out there trying to do the best thing or a good thing by helping our neighbor? You know, let's not forget those types of things. You know, so so uh, and guess what? The the culture of the the uh, the the word best is used in many different ways. So if I tell you go out there and do your best, you know your my best may yeah. not be your exactly. best. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but but we yeah. use that word best yeah. in different ways. Uh, yeah. uh, they they use it uh, the the best supporting actor yeah. or actress. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, so they, and then you want to know what's that, and then you look at the movie and say, what? That's a, or or uh, the, this is the best tool to use. Yeah. You know, what should I use to fix this? Oh, this is the best tool to use right here. Uh -huh. Or what about if you're going somewhere and somebody tell you this is the best route to take? Yeah. Yeah. Or the GPS, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm asking the GPS, so why are you putting me on this route? Oh, this is the best route to take. Oh, I said, okay. And so I take that route. Yeah. And so I don't know if it saved me time or not. <laughs> or what about this? The best man. Yeah. You know, we, we identify this guy yeah. as being the best man in the wedding. Uh -huh. And so you ask the, the groom, uh, why is he your best man? Oh, well, he, he, he saved me when I was six years old. Mm. You know, so he's become my best man. You know, or they put some kind of tag to it, right. but yeah. the best man. Yeah. But, but as we do our best to be the best, we need to remember that the best is yet to come. Because guess what? We can only do our best to be our best, uh, uh, but so much within ourselves. That's you know, correct. we need some help. We need yeah. some, some help. And God already told us that he's going to send us some help. Yeah. I'm going to send you a helper. Matter of yeah. fact, Jesus said, I'm going to send you another just like me. Yeah. And see, and it took me a while to understand that, that the Holy Spirit is just like him. Meaning that he has a, a power. He has authority. He has, and then he says this. He says that when he comes, he's not even going to speak of himself, but he's going to he's going to talk about me. And see, and now if the Holy Spirit is in you, it's not talking about Jesus. We need to check the Spirit because he said he's going to talk about me. So we need to understand what he's talking about. And so in Matthew chapter twenty four, this is what this says twenty two to twenty seven. And in those days of tribulation, had not been cut short, no human life would be saved. And see, we're talking again, we're talking about uh, evil versus is good. We're talking about right versus wrong. He says that no human life would, would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, God's chosen ones, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you during this great tribulation, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him. For false Christs and false prophets will appear, and they will provide great signs and wonders. He says, so as to deceive. You know, we need to know. Remember that plumb line? We need to know what we believe. That's right. You need to know where you stand. That's you need right. to know who you are. That's right. and, and we're going to get to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. He said, I have told you in advance. So if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go there. Or look, he is in the inner room of a house, do not believe it. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes far in the west. I don't know if you've seen that display. Yeah, yeah. You know, you look up in the sky and that lightning will flash over here. But guess what? It travels. He says that it flashes in the east and, and appears in the west. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means that, that that's how vast God is. Right. And it says this. So will the coming in glory of the Son of Man, everyone will see him clearly. <laughs> I don't know what that means to you, but when he comes, I'm going to see clearly. And guess what? I don't know how that's going to, I mean, my mind can't even comprehend how that's going to happen. You know, we think of the, the tools that we have right now, CNN and, and NBC, and we have all these different tools that, that they can show you what's going on in different parts of the world as it's taking place. And I'm not sure if that's going to be the media that he's going to use or not. Mm -hmm. But I know that it says that when he appears that we're going to be able to see him clearly. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter where you are, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to see him clearly. And, and whether he, I don't know how he's going to do it, but guess what? I'm anticipating him doing that yes. and doing a good job. That's you right. know, so, and Jesus uh, uh, represents the best for us. Yes. So when he comes, that best is come. I said the best is yet to come. Yes. And Jesus is the best that we are expecting and anticipating to come. And so we look around at, at the world and, and this, uh, this, this virtual, it has, you know, our, our society is, is virtually collapsing. I mean, it's collapsing all around us. You know, and I'm talking about the degradation. I'm talking about uh, the, how things are just going, seem to be going downhill. And, and, and see, that's part of the, the biblical prophecy. If we understand biblical prophecy, that yes, perilous times will come. 
And yes, we will have tribulation. And yes, so all of these things are going to take place. Uh, it says that that pestilence is going to be there. It says that disease is going to be there. It says that we're going to have all types of trouble. All of this stuff is going to take place. Where do you stand along that plumb line that God has let out? Where do you stand about doing your best to be the best? You know, we still have a responsibility. And remember I said earlier that God is act, act, looking forward to us participating in what he's doing in our life. Amen. You know, God can wind you up if he wanted to. And, and he never designed us, so he wind us up. But you remember those wind-up toys? Yeah. You wind it up yeah. and then you set it down and it just yeah. goes. Yeah. And it goes yeah. until it yeah. runs out of wine. Yeah. You know, that's not how God wants us to operate. He doesn't want to spend his time winding us up. Mm. You know, but he's saying that I'm going to be walking alongside of you to help you along the way. Amen. And then he's the one that's going to, to equip us to do our best, to be the best. And so it, looks, it says this here in Matthew 12. It says, because of lawlessness, and, and I don't know if you understand that. Because of lawlessness, mm -hmm. it says uh, it, it's increased. The love of most people is going to wax cold. You know, that's, that's a dangerous place for us to be. You know, where be, because everybody is, is doing wrong, I'm going to do wrong too. And that's the, some, that's the, that's the mentality of, of some people. You know, uh, uh, you know, I was always told that, that you can sit in a boat and don't have to do nothing. And guess where you're going? You're going downstream with the current. That's right. Mm -hmm. But you can be the person that's sitting in the boat and offering some resistance, uh -huh. and you don't have to just go downstream with the current. And, and so that's what, what the word is telling us, that because of lawlessness, it says because of lawlessness, it says that, that the love of most people will wax cold or grow cold. Mm. We don't want to find ourselves in that position. Mm -hmm. And so let us not, not fall into this position, or better yet, how can we counteract this condition? How can we counteract just, the, just what society is doing? You know, it's, it's, it's amazing the things that we embrace today. You know, some of those things that we embrace today, we, we used to frown at it and put our hands up, oh no, years ago. We used to say, oh no, you know. I can't accept that. That's right. But today, because we've been indoctrinated and, and we've been smoothed over, that, that sometimes we embrace those things that we used to put our hands up and say, no, please stop. Mm -hmm. One way is to answer the call for us to go into all the world. You know, Jesus said, if they're speaking for me, they can't be speaking against me. That's right. So That's we right. need to learn how to be speaking for Christ. We need to learn how to be speaking about Christ. And you say, well, I don't really... It don't matter. And I'm stop right there. It don't matter. Because you can always tell somebody about what he's done for you. That's right. You know, you don't have yeah. to have a story. You don't yeah. have to be a preacher. Yeah. You don't have to have a, a, a big audience. You, yeah. you can just tell somebody what Christ has done for you and, and what he, how he's kept you through all of the different yeah. things that, that you've experienced and that you're experiencing. Yeah. And, yeah. and as you give that testimony, that, that's what that's going to do for somebody. Yeah. That's going to give them some encouragement that they, yes, he can, if he did it for you. And I remember the 15 guys that, that got saved right after I accepted the Lord. 15, just like that. Because there was an incident that happened, and I bear, I bear the scar on my hand. I cut my hand with a box cutter right here, right down my thumb. Mm -hmm. Now, the old person would have said all kind of stuff. <laughs> Woo! And so I'm sitting here bleeding, and I looked at my hand, and I said, oh, Oh my. <laughs> I'm do that. Take that to the bank. Uh, I, 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 you know what? I, that's how much he transformed me. That's right. I was a true sailor. <laughs> and those 15 guys that were standing around the witnesses said, if he can do that for you, okay. then I want him to do that for me. And so that's what I'm talking about, how we can have a projection on people by right. we're just talking about or demonstrating what God is doing in our life. That's right. That was an immediate change that people recognized. And so, so doing your best, uh, we need to become communicators of the good news. Mm -hmm. Oh, what has he done for, you know, we say, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. Yeah. You know what, 
You can wake up in the morning. You can start a list of things that God has done for you lately. That's right. And so you can always talk and communicate those things. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what that's the hope that lies within us. Yeah. You know, there's something about about the hope that lies in us. You know, it says that the the the, the substance of, of faith. It talks about faith and, and how we even need to have hope to 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 uh, to instigate or to agitate that faith. There's something about that how they work together. And Philippi, Philemon, it says this, hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. You know something that, that it, I can always say, like the Apostle Paul, there's no good thing in me. But every good thing is in him. And if we are in him and he's in us, and see, this is one of those paradigms because a lot of us don't, don't get this concept, but we should be able to say, Lord, help me get this concept mm -hmm. that he says that I am in the Father. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Father is in me. Yes. You are in me. Yeah. So what does that make us? That makes us in him and in the Father. Yes. And so it's, it's, it's one of those things that we, sometimes we just need to think about this and maybe draw it out on paper and, and look at all of the different, yeah, we're in him. And so every good thing that's in him becomes every good thing that's in us because he's there to help us. That best is yet to come. Yeah, I was good. You know, because some people say, I was a good old boy. And yeah, you was a good old boy without him. But guess what? When the best came into your life, now you can say, I'm better than just being a good old boy. Because I'm found in him. And we, we, we have our, our being and our essence in him. And it's, it's pretty hard to live in this world without trying to walk without faith. It's hard. Yeah. You know, and we got to have faith. Sometimes we just got to have faith to walk out our doors. That's right. You know, there's, there's chaos going on. And guess what? It's, it's, it's not going to get better. You know, and I'm not trying to paint a picture of doom and gloom, but I'm saying that we need to have faith in something other than whatever we've been having faith in. Mm. We need to put our faith and our trust in him mm. because he's the one that's going to protect us. And when we say prayers like, Lord, put a hedge of protection around him, yes. we're not just, just throwing words out there. He does. He literally puts a hedge of protection around us. Yes. And, and, you know, we may not even know or be aware of the disaster that, that he saved us from. That's right. You know, but I'll I tell you another yes. story. I, I was on my way out of town, and, and I got half, not halfway, but I got maybe an hour away from, 30 minutes, 40 minutes away from, from uh, the house, and realized I didn't have a wallet. Mm. Now, how did I do realize I didn't have a wallet? I don't know, because, you know, usually once... I was out without my wallet uh, the other day. I <laughs> didn't have my wallet just the other day. But anyway, I'm driving and I realized I didn't have my wallet, so I turned around and go back home to get it. Uh -huh. And so then when I come back on the highway, there was this major multi-car mm. accident. Yes. Mm. I mean, truck, tractor trailer trucks, mm. and, and all this stuff. I mean, it was, it was terrible. Mm. I surmised I would have been right in the middle of that. Yes, mm. sir. Had I not forgotten my wallet or, you know, so yeah. what I'm saying is that he protects us. And sometimes we don't right. even know how he protects us or, right. or keeps us yeah. out of danger, but he does. Right. And we need to not resist those things when, when it happens. You know, don't call yourself bad names because you forgot your wallet. That's right. <laughs> you know, thank the Lord that, that he but, may have just saved me from, from a, a catastrophe right. or an incident right. that I couldn't avoid, right. you know, without uh, following his guidance. And so, so the so when we understand that without faith it's impossible to please Him, we need to have faith to believe that He's the one that's leading and guiding us. That He's the one that's directing our, our steps and leading us down the a path that's leading toward Him. So His coming uh, is, is very vital. You know, we talked about that in Matthew. His coming, His appearing, is very vital to us because guess what's going to happen when He comes? He's going to be He's going to bring us to be with him. He's going to raise us up to a higher level. And so this relying on God to transform us into his, his expressed image. We need to trust God that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And one of the things that he said he's going to do, he says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye 
transformed by the renewing of our mind. Not only that, but he said that he's going to transform us or conform us to the express image of his son. So God wants us to be more like his son. Yes. And, and guess what? He already calls us sons and daughters. Yes. And, 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 you know, God speaks, sometimes he speaks, and he's spe speaking futuristically. Yes. Or calling those things that are not <laughs> as though they were. You know, God has a way of speaking over our lives. Because guess what? Uh, uh, I'm not the same as I used to be. And, 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 and probably neither you. And if we look back, you say, no way that I was going to be here today. You know, I, I knew that. With no way I was going to be here today. But God. You know, so God spoke something in my life years ago. The same way he spoke something in your life years ago to bring you to this particular point in time. And if we were trying to, to sum things up based on how we used to be, you know, we probably see ourselves in a whole different situation right now, a whole different environment. And, and in my case, I wouldn't even be here, you know, if I had not been following my own uh, uh, mindset, if I had been following my own thought process. So God has a way of transforming us into the express image of his son. And, and so when we're united with him, we can attain the full character of the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. And when we are united with him, we can obtain attain the full character of the Lord, meaning that, that he's at work to transform us into that image, meaning that he wants us to be like him. Yes. We can't do that within ourselves. We cannot muster up enough wherewithal to, to make that happen. But he comes in and he does what he does. And, and guess what? We come out looking like diamonds. Yeah, or we yeah. come out looking like gold. Yeah. Or we that's come it. out looking like rubies. Yeah. I mean, we come out looking like a precious stone. And matter of fact, that's what he calls us. Yeah. You know, he calls us precious stones because, and guess what? Those precious stones are, 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 are reach their, their preciousness. Is that a word? Preciousness. Yeah. You know, so they reach their preciousness by, by the pressures and, the, and the, the things that they endure. You know, they, they, they get there because of the pressure. That they've yeah. been under, and, and you know that 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 that, that, that diamond, yes. the one that that you know that sparkles and ooh, right. that catches your eye. Yes. You know it didn't just happen. Yeah. You know, but years and years of pressure. And, you know now they have a way of manufacturing these diamonds. You know, yes. pressurized machines. Yes. But God says He He gives us the right kind of pressure that's, that's yes. shaping us and forming us into the express image of His Son. And, and so when we're united, remember this, when we're united with him, we can obtain the full character of the Lord. So yes, and as I wind down here, I'm talking about relationship. Yeah, I'm talking about building relationship with him. You know, and, and in order to do our best, to be our best requires us to be in proper relationship with him. You know, we can't say, I do. Like I told you how my mother would talk to me and I'd say, um, I'm uh, doing what you're doing. I'm sitting down on the outside because she told me something. I'm standing up on this. You know, we can't be like Jonah. You know, we're talking out of half our mouth. We, we got to be in, in it all the way. I'm in this 100%, you know. So being in this 100% means that we need to be in proper relationship with him. That requires us to know who we are. Who are you? You know, who, who am I? He calls us sons and daughters. So, I mean, that's a start right there. Yes. He calls us the apple of his eye. Yes. You know, that's a start right there. Know who you are. Yes. You know, know that, that you are, are precious in his sight. Yes. Oh, no, also know that you have access to him. That's right. I, I, you know, it, it's, it's something that, that somebody can tell you there's an outlet over there, but don't tell you what to, to plug into it. Yes. But, but, but we know that we can plug into the source. Yes. And I tell people all the time yes. that he is the source. We, you know, we can be a resource, but he is the source. You yes. need to tap into him. So know that we have access to him. Also, know where you're going. Where are you going? And, and, and even if you have no clue, you know you still have a commission right? yes. to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. and, and that preaching, you know, like I said, don't be scared of the word preach. Uh, tell somebody your story, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, tell somebody your story about what he's doing for you. You know, know that you can, uh, where are you going? I'm not just staying here. You know, I think there's a song they say, I'm going up yonder. 
and, and, and wherever your yacht is, you know, I know where my yacht is. I'm going up yonder. And, and, and it says in that song, to be with the Lord. Know where we're going, that we are sojourning through this time. And so it's, it's really nothing here that can, 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 can sway me away from, from following after him. And, and I say often that if I'm going to err, I'm going to err on the side of the gospel. Yes. You know, that, that yeah, I, I, I was, I'm was wrong over here with Jesus. Yeah. But Jesus is wrong. So anyway, we need to take our stand. We need to stand along that front line. Yes. And so, so the Lord will equip us. <laughs> Check this out. He'll equip us to, to be the best. He will. Because guess what? He says, I'm coming back for a bride. And he's talking about the church without spot, without blemish. So he's coming back. He wants to clean us up. You know, he wants to get us straight. He wants to do a work in our lives and in our heart. No matter how old you are or how young you are, he wants to do something in you that's going to be complete. So when he comes back, that we know exactly where we have, where we stand. And so remember this: that because of him, the best is yet to come. You know, so we can be sitting back waiting and anticipating for something to take place. Yeah, the best is yet to come. You know, but he doesn't just want us to stand still and idle. <laughs> you know, he says go. Yeah. You know, he says go into all the world. He says that you got a message. I want you to deliver a message. And so how will they believe if they don't hear? You know, how will they believe if they don't hear the gospel? How will they believe if they don't hear the message? Somebody got to hear the message. Yeah. Right. That God is good. And he says this. It says for the Romans, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Mm -hmm. Let me resound the words of the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Being confident of this very thing, that he who started a good work in you is able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. Father God, I thank you. Thank you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that as your word goes forth, that, Lord, that it would touch us in a special way. God, that you sent your word, God, and, and it's going to do something. You said it will not return to you void. So, Lord, do what you do, Lord, and I will forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we thank you so much, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we reached the point in our service where we opened the doors to the church. And it, it's no, uh, it, it's no mystery that we do this, but we give everybody an opportunity to to join the church. And it's just not joining the church; it's not joining the club. You know, the people want to belong to stuff. You know, and, and you see that with all these fitness clubs. Like, everybody want to belong to something. All these advertisements: come join this, come join that. You know, but but what we're really trying to say is. Uh, Salvation is the key. Come be a part of what Jesus is doing and what he's capable of doing in your life. What he's done in my life. What he's done in others' lives. And so through opening the doors to the church, we give you a, a vehicle to where you can learn. And, and it's a call to discipleship because a disciple is a disciplined learner. You know, it says this, one that learns the lifestyle of his teacher and then turns around and teaches somebody else. That's what, that's what it's all about. That's what Jesus did. He taught his disciples. And then he said, I'm out of here. <laughs> and, and guess what? They've been doing it, and it's been going on ever, ever since then. And, and so that's that discipleship process. You know, learning about him. So the doors of the church are open.
also on Facebook. The message is also available on YouTube. We have online giving at givefy.com. We'd like to pray for the sick and shut in. We have dollar makes a difference in the back. And if we have any November birthdays and anniversaries. <coughs> Just a reminder that next week we're going to have our, our Thanksgiving uh, church meal, family meal at the amen, church. Amen, amen. Uh, yes. yes. uh, we're going to address that. Uh, everybody pass the word. And, uh, you know, we, uh, everybody bring, everybody know what the menu is, right? Yeah, I know what I got. I know what I'm bringing. Yes. <laughs> so we, uh, we look forward to us, you know, you joining us uh, next week. Uh, we're going to have a, a short a short message and uh, a good time of fellowship and uh, eating. Amen. Amen. It's something, you know, Jesus broke bread. And we see the where he broke bread in the upper room with his disciples. You know, that wasn't the first time that he ate with them guys. And it's something dynamic that takes place when we get together and we break bread. We eat around the table. Or we have that family discussion while you're eating. You know, something yes, wonderful Lord. that transpires there. Yes, and so that's what we're hoping to accomplish is have a family atmosphere yes, and, uh, mm. and, and, and uh, you know, that type of thing. Birthday. Birthday? Oh, oh Carl had a birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When's, when's your birthday, Carl? Okay, all right. We gonna we gonna be celebrating those birthdays uh, uh, next next week. We're gonna sing, we're gonna sing and all that stuff next week. Amen. Amen. Not here today. He was four years old. Oh, okay. Four years old. Huh? Wow. That those fellas growing up, isn't it? His mother's birthday is the same day. Okay. 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 Very good. Okay. Amen. Amen. So November was a good month. Yeah. It's still okay. right. Yeah. Right. And that's where that's we are. I pray. Now that the God of peace who brought us, our Lord Jesus, from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, may make you complete in every good work to do his will and, and allow his will to work in you. Amen. Amen. Amen.